So my name is Vicky and uh, I have the constitution of hotness. It was like the first thing that came in my mind when I saw the movie, like um, why is William of Baskerville so hot? <laughs> and I catched up and it turned in a different way. But um, yeah, um, you will see what, uh, what this is about. And um, so I have like five love letters of William for the people of Silicon Valley. And he's talking about what uh, he think is hot, what is a kind of fetish of him. And he wants to show the people of Silicon Valley um, not that they have to, to, to work so hard to be perfect, to be this... Um, society we, we, we judge today that everyone has to work uh, like a hundred hours in a week to just slow down and find yourself and um yeah and he wants to bring like cityness to the people of silicon valley through a pa palace of fetishes or of pleasures and um you will see the different faces uh, like the five faces of the fetishes through um, my whole presentation and on the end, uh, hopefully you will understand what the whole palace is about. So um, I'll start with my movie. I will start with like an um, introduction um, that people write, wrote to the people of Silicon Valley to talk about what he wants to do on his palace. You call yourself a city, but you aren't. You forgot how to love, you forgot how to live. You are less than nothing. This is a, not about urbanity or, and order. This is about the hottest, hotness through cityness. But man delights to ruin man. I want to show you more about the hedonistic way of life. In the last 600 years, I saw a lot of struggles in people's life. They lost the sense of living their best life. Everything is about working hard, being successful, being rich, being perfect, being stressed. The men of the world almost always wear masks, pretending that the order of our society is good for us, is a naive and lazy approach to life. We need cows and freedom for riches or one thing, money another. We should waste as much money as we can on a wide variety of things. Only when we have filled our environment with the highest density of perishable things can we decide what real hotness is. Because the pleasure we take in beautiful, expensive things betokens vanity as well as success. What is our love without 
problems, fate, pleasure, fetishes, and laughter. So the first love letter of William is to the fetish form of capital. Um, he's talking about applying nail polish and yeah. My dearest nail polish, how can you put the essence of charm, sorcery and alarmment into words? How can you convey the depth of emotion you feel when you devote yourself to something regarded with a way as having mysterious powers or being the representative of a duty that may be worshipped through it? These are questions that have plagued me since I first saw you, and yet I feel complete to answer them now. You have these mysterious powers and you are the representative of duty that may be worshipped through it. You are a transcendent force of nature, a sublime manifestation of beauty that defies all attempts at, at categorization or definitions. Thus, in purity may be found greatness, in greatness beauty, in beauty simplicity, and in simplicity splendor. The only purpose of our existence is to serve me in, in staging myself. You are a reminder of the infinite possibilities that exist in the world, a moment of pleasure and inspiration that shines brightly even in the darkest of times. Neither is luxury the fault of lovely and charming objects, but of the heart that involves in inordinately love sensual pleasures. To the neglects of temperance, we've attached us to the objects more lovely and their spirality and more de delectable by their incorruptibility. Whenever I look at you, I am filled with the sense of wonder in a way that borders on the mystical. So far as I am concerned, I have only made up my mind after many years of meditation. Here I rest. My, my consistence is at peace and my heart is satisfied by just applying you. You are the masterpiece of art, a canvas on which is the sense of my life is painted in brush strokes of sheer brilliance and genius. In short, you are the citizeness to me. Everyone has a fetish. Urbanity is about order, but you, you are about to act out. Yours, William of Baskerville. <laughs> so maybe after the first letter, you understand what William tries to tell the people of Silicon Valley. Um, yeah, it's about the fetish, um, which a lot of people in their lives um, don't want to show, but maybe that, that's the spice of life to show or act out some fetishes. Um, the next letter uh, William wrote um, is to the Prince of Darkness. It's the ambivalence of an angel or like the ambivalence of the city. So you don't have just the good and the bad things. So you have everything in the city. My dear Prince of Darkness, you are one of my most complex and multifaceted friends, full of contradictions and surprises. Your dark and ominous appearance, your elements of the lonely, of the lost, just seem to be strange. You are the object of humanism and your bloody materiality, as well in philosophical thought, where you are only a flesh or, or flesh, fleshy origin and shadow. You are a living curiosity made of the strangest and most encouraging elements. I'm so glad you aren't like the synthetic perf perfectness I used to see in urbanity. You are the darkness of beauty. You give space to those who aren't perfect, to the people who no one wants. Your generosity towards the dark face, the woman of the streets, the homeless under the bridge, the gangs on the corner, the dirt on the floor, the smell of piss. You are not about the money, the work, the success. You are about the, about the man who no one wants. The resistance of truth in the dark center of things is linked. Paradoxical to, the, to this serene power of the empirical gaze that turns the darkness into light. At your core, you are a place of rebellion and freedom, where people are encouraged to embarrass their true selves and life, live life to the fullest. A friend where all are welcome, with transcendent boundaries of race, gender, and social class, and inspire a sense of unity and solidarity in your fans. You love an indelible mark on our cultural landscape for endless generations. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, Yours truly, William of Baskerville. So that's the first phase, now the second phase of passage. Um, in each letter, you will see other side of the of the phase. 
And on the last page, you will see the whole palace. So the next letter is the tribute to the uselessness. This is dedicated to the fascinator. So maybe some don't know what the fascinator is. So a fascinator is like the hat that Kate Middleton or all the all these uh, persons have on their head. That's not about to to not to count the sun through the eyes. Just like it's it's um like um like a ring or it's just a decoration. Yeah. So it's dedicated to the uselessness. My dearest fascinator, things have meaning, but they make sense. You not. To become real, it is necessary that an object or a function should bear the marks of ex exquisite uselessness. Thanks to you, pleasure is a duty, idleness a service, and honest work the lowest form of the deg degradation. In a Polish nation, full of wit, strange, laziness, brevity, are held in honor. The same way your effortless existence, your being without meaning, your sheer senselessness are the testament to the ingenuity and creativity of the human spirit. You are a shining example of how uselessness can enrich our lives, how it brings us pleasure and entertainment in ways we could never have imagined and did not know we needed. The uselessness of the city contributes both. It is charm and its pregnancy, which is part of its charm. Once this happens, its possibilities become endless. Perfect is what we're nothing, where nothing is missing and nothing can be added. Joy is a pleasure that the soul sees, feels in itself. Pleasure is the feeling of perfection or excellence, wherever in ourselves or in something else. For the perfection of, our, of other beings also is agree agreeable, such as understanding, courage, and especially beauty in another human being or in an animal or even in a lifeless creation, a painting or a work of craftsmanship. A well. For the image of such perfection and others impressed upon us causes some of this perfection to be implanted and around, aroused within. My dear uselessness, you have captured my heart and my imagination, and I'm forever grateful to you for always reminding me of the endless nonsense of being human. Let the others work, let the others do, and let us just be. With love, William of Baskerville. Yeah. So the celebration of the absurd is um, a little bit more talking about the humor. And the, the nice thing about humor is that everyone is included. So everyone can laugh and um, yeah, it's for everyone um, in the best way of humor. So... William is talking to the silly walks. Dear Ministry of Silly Walks, it is with great admiration that I write these words to express my affection for the amusing and surreal works of art that your hilarious organization has brought into the world. The dedication to the absurd and the non-sensual is a testament to the human spirit, spirit boundless capacity for brilliant, deep humor. Everyone can enjoy our creativity and brilliance. No temper, no harshment. An easy way to love the grace and elegance of your department's offices as they cross the urban landscape with the unique gates are a sight to behold. And they are a ray of hope for all, not just for the intelligent and successful and the perfect ones, but for all who want. Your commitment to excellence in the art and admire the passion and dedication with which you include very human being. You are a simplicity is achieved if every figure shows its emotions clearly and unquivocally, and if the mood of the scene is convinced, con convincingly conveyed. In a world that is often all too serious, the Ministry of Study Works is shining, example of the power of humor to uplift and inspire. But our will cannot come into such perfectness of all art, truth and wisdom, without any silliness. Please take this letter as a token of, admi of my admiration and gratitude for all you have done to make the world a happier and more absolute place. Your William of Baskerville. 
So the last letter of William for the people of Silicon Valley. Um, in his last letter, he's speaking about a ritual, a ritual that everyone needs and should have in his, um, in his life. So, my dear fellow humans, objects, and plants, this is about licking your finger, but in a spiritual way. What's the deal with the fanatism about technology, money, and success? What about the breath of God, the inspiration of life, the disposition, character, vigor, courage, pride, and arrogance of each of you? People might lose their sense of being unique. There's, there was a time I wasn't happy with myself. I hated that I am who I am. There was a friend of mine who was there, and after a long day of nothing, she licked a tiramisu out of a cup with just a little thing of her hand. That was the moment I felt better. These are the moments in life, the rituals everyone needs. To lick your finger, you are to lick your finger. You are free to propose, pursue your passions, take risks, and make mistakes without the burden of responsibilities. Yes, and there are there is pleasure. You should always become to yourself, your ideas and idols. You have to be full of dreams and aspirations and driven by a sense of purpose and anticipation for what lies ahead. It is time of hope and optimism when anything seems possible. You have to see pleasure of the chief goal of life. But be careful. There's always a price to pay. Responsibility must be taken for these actions. You should enjoy an intimate kiss, a great run, a close friendship all over, even if we don't know how, even if it's the hardest we can do. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The, mis the misery is now upon us is but the passion of greed, the bitterness of men who were feared the way of human progress. In summary, we cannot both experience and think that we experience. Sincerely, William of Baskerville. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will visit the Palace of Pleasures of William of Baskerville.